So, welcome back. This is M Dog. We're playing Russian Fishing 4. You know, I've talked about this before. I think I've even said this about this spot, right? We're at 71,100 here at Volkov. And I've said, if you were making a list of the top fishing spots in this game, right? For me, at least, if I was making a top five, certainly a, certainly a top ten, but I would think top five as well. This spot's got to be on there. Just a lot of good memories from here. A lot of good fish you can catch. Um, it certainly it has been bream here or close to here uh, back in the day, but more often it's just historically been a fascinating spot to catch. Fimba or Blue Bream or Nace or White Eyes, you know. Um, so all kinds of things like that. So right now, so I saw that there was some activity here. And so I've, I've been, you know, kind of sitting here trying it for the last little while. And I think I'm you know, starting to get a good, good enough feel that, yeah, it seems like this spot's really active at the moment. So what I thought would be interesting to do is... Um, take a look at the setups we're using, do a little uh, deep dive into which setup is working, how it's working, how well it's working, and then maybe we'll get a little weird with the setups, mix things up a little bit, because right now we're not feeding the water at all, and that's something I'd like to change. The easy way would be to use PVA, which we could do some, I don't know, we'll see. But I'm, I'm thinking more like, let's try to get some ground bait out there. Let's do some method. Um, maybe we can go to like loop rig on one, use natural bait. I don't know, we'll see. But first, let's talk about uh, what we're doing here. So 71100 here at Volkov. We are using two different setups. The first two setups are the same. The third setup's different. Both of these have recently been on the VK, so I want to do a little quick comparison to see which one was better. And I'm not sure that I have an answer. I think they're both doing really well. Um, so, as far as the two setups go, we'll start with this one first. First of all, we have this one, which this has caramel and um, cream brulee sinking boilies size eight 14 hook all three of the setups are going to be about the same we're using you know 6.8 liter nine lead core this is our our bonus and feeders so this one's got caramel eight cream brulee eight cream dip the first two setups have slightly small uh, larger hook 12 instead of 14 slightly larger boilies red worm and blood worm 10 and instead of cream we've got amino now out of the gate knowing what we know about this game you would think this one would target white bream better and that this one would target blue bream better but there's also going to be a lot of overlap between those two species as well as several other species i would imagine and by the way all of these fish were caught late morning up until now which is late afternoon this spot should be at its best evening overnight early morning because of the species we're catching i would think in the dead of overnight it might get a little tight a little slow but those are the times that you're going to potentially see the best fish. And people are definitely catching trophies here, especially white bream trophies. If you need a white bream trophy, now seems to be a good time to get that. A lot of these pancakes are coming out, which is actually really fun. I think catching these good sized white bream like this is a blast. So let's do a deep dive real quick into which baits are catching what let's look at the best couple of fish or few fish of each species that we've caught and get the breakdown on which bait is doing it let's see if we can get this fish in real quick so we're going to miss we're, we're not going to be quite as on top of fishing for a minute here just while we look in our keep net 
and then we'll make a decision. I haven't even made a final decision. Look at that, another really nice one. And again, on the other bait. So I haven't even made a final decision on what we're gonna change to, but I just wanna try some weird stuff. All right, so first of all, let's look at the blue bream. There's only two to look at. One of them came on the red worm blood worm. One of them came on the caramel cream brulee. Technically, the larger one came on the caramel cream brulee, but, uh, and I think we may see a little bit higher percentage of blue bream in maybe tonight, but mostly in the early morning. We've had two bream come in. Both of them should be on the red worm, blue worm. They are uh, only one of them marker, both of them very small. Couple of crucian carp. We'll see if those are both, nope, so one of each. So some small crucian carp you don't really want. Both of these setups have a chance. Caramel cream caught the gibble. So maybe slightly higher chance. Now I'd, I would say I'd is coming in on the cream caramel, right? No, red worm, blood worm. So one of each. No, actually just red worm, blood worm. So I'm wrong. So the eyed is so far coming in on those. Now white bream, let's go by size. The largest one, red worm, blood worm, red worm, blood worm. How far do we go down? Okay, so the third one, caramel cream. But is there another one? Oh yeah, two in a row caramel cream. Then red worm, blue. So it looks like that the white bream are just healthy in this spot and that both baits are catching them if not equally, at least close. And then we did have one wide eye on red worm, blood worm. So does it feel like, you know, it's hard to say because remember twice as many red worm, blood worm lines are in the water. Uh, so if we had had two red worm, blood worm, I'm sorry, two cream blue brulee caramel setups, then maybe that one would, you know, I mean, that one would have more so red worm blood worm does have a distinct advantage right now Ooh, that's another nice one on caramel cream blue lay it's making me wonder if that's the direction we should go because the trick is if you're gonna feed it and if you want to feed it based on the boilies or the baits you're using then that could you know you may end up making a feed around one of these two bait approaches Huh. It's tough to say. You know, and maybe feeding the water just isn't necessary. We could always just put ground bait in on one of them and leave the other two the same. Oh, there's a blue. A marker blue and it came in on red worm blood worm that's interesting okay One thing we haven't seen yet is Vimba. We haven't seen a single Vimba. And that may be a bait issue. Like what are the weekly Vimbas caught on? And are they caught here even? All right, some of them are. Okay, so bark beetle larva is always an interesting bait to use in this spot, one of several. Um, what are the weekly blues on? Yeah, caddisfly can be good. Bunch of algae is always the old fallback, right? Oh, look, top five's coming in on red worm, blood worm. Man, that's tough. So one thing I'm thinking though is we could do bark beetle larva on the middle rod with some sort of blue bream ground bait so that we're feeding the water a little bit, at least from one rod. I don't know. I don't know. I was going to get all experimental, but I actually feel like all of these setups right now are working really well. I don't know that you can go wrong on either one of these approaches.
I also think it's weird that we're using 12s here, but 14s here. I mean, there's been plenty of times where we've targeted blue bream with size 12 hooks, right? This may be a gnarly fit. I mean, this might be something we don't want to catch. Look how it's uh, on this 14 gram quiver tip. It's making it do some weird things. Maybe it'll be a trophy roach or something. But I'm a little nervous that it's... It's on there now, right? It may just be a bream. Oh, it's an eyed. Yeah, that's true. We're catching eyed, so if, if anything's going to give us a hard time, it'll be a big eyed, right? Oh, I meant to change that. Well, we don't have ground bait on or anything, so we could just change it. We don't have 13 hooks, do we? No. I'm just wondering if we want to equalize the hooks. In other words, either put 12s or 14s on both of the outside rods so that those boilies, even though the boilies are slightly different, these are 8s, these are 10s. Kind of like to have the hook size the same. Let's try 12s. All right, what do we have on here? Caramel and cream. Cream brulee. All right, one second.
All right. So there we go. One thing I've noticed is that we are catching a, because it's nighttime, you know, late afternoon, early evening, we are catching a decent amount of eyed all of a sudden. Um, which, you know, is okay. All right, let's try this just for a bit. Let's try this just for a bit. Let's go loop rig, bark beetle larva, and let's change this to um, one of our blue bream ground baits. Just feed the water a little bit, see what this, see what this seems like. It might actually be worse. These boilies are working so good, it might actually be worse, but we'll see. I, I undercast that, obviously. Now, I do think, especially during uh, trophy times, might be worth going with some kind of PVA. But I didn't really want to do that because I knew that uh, some folks watching this might not have access to PVA. So, um, But when I was thinking about just going all bloodworm and um, redworm, you know, there's some pretty easy ground bait stuff you can come up with. You've got red worm pellets, blood worm pellets, regular blood worm, chopped worm. You've got either blood worm or earthworm extract. So there'd be some pretty, you know, easy recipes we could, um, we could put together around the blood worm. And so I was just curious, like if a method approach would work and just throwing on some ground bait instead of PVA. But I think I want to see how this goes. So far, not so good. I mean, that um, that nature bark beetle has been pretty slow. And the issue with that maybe is it's not going to, if it's not doing as well with lots of different uh, fish species, like these boilies are just catching a little bit of everything right now. Um, So that may be the problem. Was there, there wasn't really anything other than boilies on the white eye bream, right? There might've been one like garlic dough or something. Yeah, garlic dough. Um, oh, that's cool. Algae actually caught a white bream. Okay, so why are we doing bark beetle instead of algae? And perhaps we, um, perhaps we switched it too soon. Maybe the way to go would be to, um, you know, keep the boilies on until like 4 a.m., 3.30, 4 a.m. Wow, that insect is loud. That's better.
All right, first fish on the bark beetle larva. And we are starting to see a slowdown in general. And that's a nice rough. So that's actually, I think, a good thing. Uh, you know, it may be... Might be worth trying that again. Let's see what, what how, how long it takes to get the next bite. Because again, there could be a slowdown in the middle of the night here. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how strong it is. But... Yeah. Again, I think I said this last video too. I would almost want to do two hours with, you know, with rest in between to let the spot rest. But I would do one hour with straight caramel crème brûlée, and then one hour with straight red worm, blood worm, and then do a direct comparison. Uh, there's too many like variables and factors that could impact that test. I'm not saying it would be like <laughs> definitive, but I would just be really curious at what the results would be. Another rough, I think. All right, so the problem with this is now we seem to be dodging, um, dodging the, oh, are we, it was the ground bait never added? What happened? Now we seem to be dodging the white bream. All right, let's see what algae does. All right, so we'll give it a little bit more time here to see if it sustains a good enough bite rate overnight. And also, what are we catching? Okay, eyed, yeah, that's a little awkward, right? Why did all of our clips disappear? Oh, it didn't. Okay. Yeah. So we have, I know I mentioned this earlier, but we've got 21 clip. I think it goes 21, 21, 20. So, I mean, now we're getting close enough to that 3.34 a.m. that I'm not really worried about it. But, it, it, you know, it may be worth slightly changing your strategy for the very middle of the night. Like, you know, putting on those uh, bark beetle, beetle, beetle larvae, you know, all of a sudden we're getting rough, right? So, or, or you, could, do you put something on that might suddenly give you some bream here and some regular bream in this spot? I mean, we've caught a few, so, I mean, I know they're here. Um, you know, throw on garlic dough, catch a few bream while you're waiting on the white bream and the blue bream to pick back up. 
but let's see what this is. Is it another eye? No, this is a nice white bream. So they just seem to like, they just took a break for a minute, but they're still here. They're still biting. They typically are active at night. They're just going to be best in that, um, I think, 5 to 8 a.m. slot. But that's true of blue bream as well. And you would think that the algae would uh, would hit the blue bream, or you would hope. Yeah, they're coming in again now. I think it's another white. They are starting to come in again. The real, especially when the Vimba aren't active, the real treasure here, though, is the Blue Bream. I mean, anything you can do, I guess, to lean into blue bream a little bit, which maybe makes me think the red worm, blood worm could be the way to go. Because um, that's where you're going to make your silver, your, or your, the, the, you know, a big difference in your silver. Wow. Look at that. Caramel cream blue relay. Hmm. It's hard to know. They're both so good right now, it seems like. It seems like they're both so good. I want to try to give it a chance to get that first bite on um, on uh, algae, but then I want to switch back to bloodworm, redworm. I think. But algae might not catch something until a little later if it hits a blue bream at all. We'll see. We're getting some nibbles. Let's make sure it's really on. Yeah, I think it is. Oh, if it's a white bream, it's a nice, nice pancake. Oh. What in the world is this? Oh, it's a tench. Okay. I mean, I got nothing against the random tench wanting to come visit us. I mean, look at all of these species. Now, you know, we went off the charts a little bit with rough when we threw in bark beetle, but still, so many different species. All right, where else would you say top, if you had to do a top five, this would be a fun video to put together. Top five, five fishing spots, all-time fishing spots in, uh, in RF4. It's too bad mosquitoes, for a list like this, you'd want old mosquito to be a part of the discussion, right? But it's not. So I guess the goal might be like pick pick a classic spot from 
maybe from winding. I can think of one that for me would kind of feel this way, but I don't think it would be that way for a lot of people. But uh, Old Berg, the problem with Old Berg or Old Fort is just picking one, right? Which is the classic one. Probably a bream spot on the left side of the map, but it's tough. I mean, there's there's so many good ones. Um, this would be my vote for 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 um, for Volkov, right? Uh, Corey. I mean, even though Corey's been changed, you can still kind of identify. I mean, it's probably at the key. Classic, it's probably the key. Maybe the island, but I don't know. It's That's a little weirder. Belaya hasn't been around long enough. Bear, I mean, you know, 4450 maybe. This place, this would be Volkov. Um, I, and I don't really know if anything connects with me at Sura as a classic. And I really think anything else just hasn't been around long enough. Amber, I mean, if you're going to do Amber, that'd kind of be its own list. It'd be hard to have a top five at Amber alone. Actually, it'd be probably perfect to have a top five at Amber now that I think about it. But but everybody's experiences are different. I do think there's there are some spots like this one that just stand out. If you've been around long enough, you have probably fished here. cool thing about this spot is it's still relevant today some of the classic spots aren't as relevant as they used to be Yeah, we shouldn't have put algae on, at least not when we did. So I don't think size 12 hook has like, I'd probably go back to size 14 hook on the caramel cream brulee and stay at 10, sorry, at 12 on the blood worm, red worm, and then holy cow, so many fish, and then go back to the blood worm, red worm on the middle rod. We'll just fish till about... 8 a.m. It's a couple more hours and we'll we'll wrap it up. I'm hoping we'll get lucky on a fish on algae, but we may not. The other thing that we have to keep in mind is that this ground bait may not be working. This is a pretty standard blue bream ground bait. Typically it works really well. That doesn't mean it's working right now. This is actually one of the variations. This isn't this might not be the most classic, but it's one of the variations. It's interesting. We did not see a single you know, decent bream come in. And, and if it was going to come in, I would have you know, it could be any of them, but especially this. I remember back in my early days of playing the game, you, you would use, like, small caramel boilies to trophy bream. Bream and eyed. It's one of, the, one of those baits that you could do that with. It kind of, we switched it up a lot, but it was one of them. And a lot of times it was here at this spot or down here a little bit. And then occasionally over to the side over here somewhere... Maybe here mostly, casting towards that hole, but farther down the side. And I don't know if you remember, but like this used to be a terrific bream spot. Sometimes Vemba as well, 
But regular bream up here used to be fantastic. Lots of great spots here at Volkov over the years. There's a blue bream. I've been really disappointed in the algae. That was obviously not the way to go. Not sure if I've ever seen this spot like as healthy as it is right now for white bream. I mean, we have been catching these nonstop like all day. All right, so let's let's try something before we wrap it up here. Little different. So instead of blue bream, let's embrace the white bream. And we'll go with the worm setup. which is the amino dip. When's the last time you used method feeder? Let's hope it works. Sometimes method just is disappointing, but sometimes it does well. It's cool to be able to use ground bait with carp baits, you know, especially a small fish like this. As long as it doesn't just completely kill the bite rate. The other thing is we've been here now more than an, more than an hour. So that potentially starts to work against us a little bit. Do you ever just embrace the eye here? Well, not like that. It shows promise. I don't know what's happening over here, but it shows promise. Oh, it's an eyed again. I always get faked out thinking we're going to get a trophy white bream. Yeah, over a fish a minute, basically. Even with all the messing around and... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't call it a comeback. Oh, interesting. 
Isn't this our first roach? Which I knew roach were active here. In fact, somebody caught a trophy roach with the um, one of these two baits. But I think that's our first. No, okay, we had had one other roach. Okay, that makes me feel a little better. It's weird that Method suddenly caught the first roach. I've been having a blast lately in Fisher Online, but I will say no game, including Fisher Online, captures just the the responsiveness, the feeling um, of you know holding your fishing gear like Russian fishing for. Everything just feels like it's a one-to-one -one reaction with what you're doing. Um, they, they, I mean, I, I still think Russian Fishing 4 got the actual mechanics of fishing down in a better way than any other game has that I've played. All right, it's hoping to see one more fish on method. It just depends on how long it takes though. All right, we need to wrap this up. Let's see what this last fish is. We've got, this will be our 70th fish. And probably, you know, we might need to follow the hour rule here on this spot and let it, let it rest. All right, well, not knowing some of the other factors that could have contributed to this, if you're going to fish this spot, based on what I've seen, I would either go with, you know, this or the other boily setup or a combination of both like I did. Uh, both of those seem to be way stronger 
than you know what this method setup has looked like. Although because we only tried this at the end, it's hard to say for sure because everything has been so much slower now that we've been here over an hour. Um, we got past that early morning part. If you need to trophy white bream, I think this is the a time that you could do that pretty easily if you're patient. Um, I'm not so sure about the blue bream trophies. I think they're coming out some, but some there's definitely times where it seems like it'd probably be much easier. But the star of the show right now appears to be white bream overall. Which is fun. It's not as lucrative when the star of the show is blue bream and vimba, but it's still fine. Any of these small bream species, fun to catch, fun to like get honed in on targeting them, figuring out what's working the best. And as you'll see in a minute, you, uh, you actually don't do terribly on silver. Now XP, they can be pretty low. Uh, if you're trying to do it for leveling, it's probably not your best option but it's fun so you can just not worry about it and just have fun and also make a little bit of silver at the same time which is great and don't forget about the cafe there's usually really good cafe orders 286 silver that is insane For how cheap a gear you could use to fish this spot, that is incredible. Oh, look at this blue bream order too. So that's 60 more silver. That is crazy. And you would eventually get the wide eyes if you were patient. Um, and this would be reason to switch up your baits at night and go ahead and get this bream order done if you can. So anyway... 60 plus, we're going to be at 300 silver, I bet. Over 300 silver. That is fantastic. All right, 71, 100. I love it. Thank you, guys. You're the best. Thanks for the support. Uh, thanks for hanging in here with me. I'm going to probably get one more Fisher Online video, try to get that recorded this weekend. But it has been a long weekend, a lot of work. Thanks for the patience on times that I've had to mute myself and all that. But Anyway, tight lines. I'll see you next time.